What we would like so much to free you from is the impossible task of controlling the conditions of your environment so that you can have a good feeling response to those conditions. We would like to show you how with far less effort than you think, far less focus than you have really applied to anything, you can bring yourself into vibrational alignment, alignment, alliance, vibrational co-creativeness, vibrational harmony, vibrational beingness with the whole of who you are. For the human is the angel on earth. There's a direct pipeline to spirit. This spiritual part of the human is there like an antenna, waving in the breeze all your life. Some of you know what to do with it and plug it into that sacred pipeline. Most don't. But when you do, it is when your most profound meditations occur. The invitation in this energy is to learn to develop that pipeline and tune into that energy. There are many who are just beginning to tune into the higher self energy. These are the ones who are discovering for the first time in their lives that there is more than they thought about God. Does one God mean one truth? Or could you indeed see many roads to the one God? What if there were multiple realities of truth that all led to the same place? Would you be okay with that? If you really need the one singularity of truth, I will give it to you. You are all connected. You see, you are a piece of God, the angelic realm, the creative force of the planet. That is how powerful you are. You are angels and you can create whatever it is on earth that you wish to create. The darkest dark and the lightest light are both on your palette of energy colors. Many of the energies of the yin and yang are then manifested. There are so many different perspectives. There are so many different beliefs and cultural backgrounds and upbringings and all these different things that make up each and every one of us. And we are part of a greater whole. We are source energy flowing into the human body. There is a piece of God that comes in with you. It is God in your DNA. It resides in you and it's waiting to be awakened. And it is a quantum energy. So for the beginner, we say that you can move aside the karma you were born with and start creating your own reality. In a lot of situations, people in this world, from what I have seen, observed, and experienced, people get very triggered oftentimes about witnessing or having being told about someone else's belief that is just totally opposite theirs. A lot of times people have trouble with this. And that's why I want to talk about it. Because yeah, at one time I had trouble with it too. But there's a way, a way from the madness. Rather than polling the planet in order to try to determine what's the right or wrong behavior. And that, how's that working out? Rather than doing that, instead, seek alignment, which means seek the best feeling you can find right now. So it's not whether this is right or wrong. It's which thought feels better. Rather than asking if something is right or wrong, ask yourself instead, is the path of least resistance to my alignment to do this or not do this? Anything that you do that takes you more out of alignment than putting you in alignment is holding you in a place of resistance and that is not the momentum that you're wanting to find. What appears to be 3D confusion is quantum organization. There actually is a system and it has to do with vibration and energy. In this system, anything that vibrates at any frequency sets up potentials that are marked for their vibratory rate. They then become marked potentials. These represent potentials that are most likely to manifest into 3D reality. In addition, there are strings of vibration that are always between all of the potentials. There are strings between what appears to be the chaos between one person and another, how they met, what they do. You call this coincidence, but a light worker calls it synchronicity. There are no accidents. They are manifestations of potentials into realities based upon the vibration of the quantum attributes. And it links to what you call co-creation. Law of attraction is responding to your point of attraction. What you are putting out vibrationally really matters. When someone or something causes you to feel unhappy and you allow yourself to roll around in that, unhappiness you're depriving yourself of everything that you consider to be happy making in that time that's why the stakes feel so high and that's why that you're so mad at them because you can feel the tug of war between where you know you are and where you want to be and where you're being as a result of this thought or this situation or this relationship when someone offers me a belief that i don't prefer 
I simply take it as they are trying to give me what they perceive as a gift. See, to them, from their perspective, from their life, from their beliefs, what they are telling you is how they really see it. And in that way, it is true to them. So everybody, regardless if I agree with them or not, everybody is speaking their truth. And that's okay with me because them speaking their truth is not threatening to me. It doesn't take away any validity from my truth. You know, I choose to express in different ways than these other individuals. But when I sit down and I look at their messages or I, you know, that they're sending out into the world, I might be able to at least understand that they are doing their best to share their experiences and their beliefs from their own perspective, right? And then I can just say, you know what? That's their reality. It's not mine. And it's not going to threaten mine. When you realize that you have the ability to accomplish, to practice, to master alignment with who you really are, then you're not threatened. People often say, Abraham, I've really been enjoying this. I've been studying for a while. I've been meditating and I've been doing some processes and I feel so good. But those people at work are so negative. <laughs> and what you're really saying is, and therefore I feel threatened. They threaten my potential happiness because of the way they are. And we say, nothing can threaten your potential happiness. You have to get to the place where you're not willing to let anything threaten your potential happiness. Stuff can happen, but you must not feel that because it's happening that you have to give it enough of your attention that you deprive yourself. So here's the way it works. Your inner being is very selective about what attention is offered. And when you're sloppy about it and just giving your attention anywhere, then often you disconnect yourself from your inner being, but it's not the fault of the subject of your attention. It's the problem of your inability to focus where you mean to. And you got to practice in order to do that. You see? So when they walk up to me and they share their perspective from where they're standing, I don't get angry. I don't start fighting them. Not anymore. Not, not once I realized I was creating my reality. Not once I realized I had the choice. I had the choice to take a breath. I had a choice to not respond at all. If I don't want, I have a choice to simply walk away. I have a choice to say thank you, but no thank you to their belief. I don't have to annihilate them. I don't have to cancel them because I don't agree with them. Almost the whole world is running around saying, you need to be different. 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 And we say, it's time to accept. They're not going to do it for you. They're not going to be different for you. Right. They were not born to be different for you. No one can be the way you need them to be in order for you to always be in the state of alignment. You've got to take this as your personal responsibility and something that's really a fun hobby. A hobby? A really fun hobby. <laughs> what do you do for a living? This. What do you do for fun? Alignment. <laughs> alignment. I do alignment. Oh, really? What kind of a hobby is that? Well, it's really a fun hobby. You can do it almost everywhere you are. Just look for positive aspects and practice them. The more you focus on them, the more that comes to you. And Get in a good feeling energetic space. And when you do this, what you will see is your manifestations and the things that unfold in your day will be different than they were on the days when you just rolled out of the bed on the wrong side, so to speak, when you jumped out and projected your energy in a negative way or in a not good feeling way. Look at it like as an analogy like this. Imagine you're in going through a race, you're racing and you're coming up to these hurdles, you know, the hur hurdles that people in the races. So anyways, you're coming up to hurdles. You can see them coming. Now, if you're in alignment with source, which means if you're in a good feeling energy space, if you're feeling good, you can literally glide over those hurdles with ease. If you're not in alignment, if I'm not in alignment with source and I approach these manifestations, I might 
knock a hurdle down. I might knock them all down. I might skin up my knees. I might be bloody. That's just part of it. Because it really matters what energy you approach things with. It matters what energy you're in alignment with. And when you know that you've created things in the past that you didn't like, that's okay. Because guess what? If we can create things that we don't prefer, we can create things that we do prefer. And again, I'm just asking you test it out. What you are translating, what you are seeing has to do with where your expectation is and where your practice is. That's why we talk about step one, ask step two is source answer. Step three is find that receptive mode. And step four is the mastery of that. It's not just the ability to focus, but the desire to feel good. That is so strong that it inspires your willingness to focus. I know that embracing our differences leads to harmony. We're pushing against and fighting our differences leads to war and destruction and the insanity that has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. I don't even know how long it's been going on probably, you know, cause you think back to the story of Jesus. He had a message and he said, turn the other cheek. Now, some people interpreted this as let yourself be beaten. That is not how I interpret it. Turn the other cheek to me means find a new perspective. Find a new perspective. Get in alignment with love, unconditional love, self-love. And from that place, choose your action. The one who said he was the son of God was very clear about all this. He said, I am the son of God and so are you. His message was about manifestation, to help you to understand that the magnificence that he had inside him was also yours. It didn't sell, sit well with his culture and his age, and the conquerors of his land killed him. I want to tell you that what he showed you is what you can do with mastery. You can change matter. You can rewind a clock in your DNA. You can create healing that is beyond what you thought you could ever do. And it comes right from the higher self inside of you. The energy of the masters is with you, and the reason they came here was his examples so you could see it and do as well. For the masters have all returned, and they sit upon this very place. Wherever you are, they are here. They are part of the structure of a new magnetic grid, and they are here in spirit, not in body. They are here to enter you if you wish, in a way that will create healing and manifestation and solutions in your body. So if you're new and you're looking at this, I am telling you that the master showed you what is now possible. The harmonic convergent is what allowed this to be. And your choice as a human being is to look into this or not. And I'm telling you, I've applied this in my life and it made huge differences. I know that someone believing in something, someone knowing something doesn't come from hearing it from another person. True knowing comes from experiencing it. So all I want to do is share with you my experiences and let you know and encourage you that you can test it out in your own reality. You can test it out right away, anytime. You can see for yourself. Do not be critical on yourselves if you do not then follow what you are told by another human being or organization, by what they think is appropriate spirituality. For their truth is different than yours. Their search for God is different than yours. Blessed is the human being who searches for God in any way at all. I'm sending you love. I'm sending you good vibes. And I'm wishing you all the best. Always. This little